What up guys? Welcome to a coding tutorial, my first actual coding tutorial. Hopefully this one's actually useful compared to the last one. I, if you haven't watched the last one, I would seriously suggest it so you got some idea what I'm doing. I'm going to be assuming that you've watched it. Anyway, let's jump into it. So we're going to be making a smart dots thing. I don't know, dots are going to be able to find their way to a goal. And if we have time, we'll introduce some obstacles so they have to move around it. Okay, let's jump right into it. So we're going to start off the same way we always start off with these things. We're going to need to make the game. In this case, the game is rather simple. It's just dots need to be able to follow a series of vectors, which apply forces to them to get them from A to B. So let's start with building the dots class. Our dots will be simple objects. This means they need a position, they need a velocity, and they need an acceleration. These are going to be P vectors, which in processing is just what they call vectors. So simple stuff. We'll initiate them in the middle of the screen and they'll have zero velocity and zero acceleration. We also want to create some functions to show them to the screen and to move them around. In order to simulate forces applied to the dot, we're going to need to be able to set the acceleration. To do this, we're going to use a new object called brain. This object is going to contain a series of P vectors, which we're going to use to set the acceleration. At the start, we want our dots to just move around randomly. So to do this, we need to randomize every element of the array. And let's add our brain to the dot and initialize it to have 400 vectors. Now we just want to set the acceleration of the dot to the next element in the directions array. All right, we're ready to test it out. Processing's draw function is called every frame and every frame we want to move it and then we want to show it. Now the problem with this is the dot just keeps on accelerating. So to prevent this, we need to limit the maximum velocity of the dot. And to do this, just call a simple function. Something else we want it to do is to die whenever it hits the boundaries of the window. So to do this, we're going to create a new function called update. And from within update, we're going to call move. And then we're going to test if it's outside the window. And if it is, we want to kill the dot. We also want to only update alive dots. And once the dot runs out of directions to follow, we want it to die. Okay, so now that we're happy with how the dot's moving around, we want to create a bunch of dots. We want to create a population. So let's just make a class for that. Now we want to create some functions, which will call functions from with the dots on every dot in the population. For example, show and update. Okay, too easy. Now let's test out the population. Hmm, that's not supposed to happen. They're supposed to die on the edges. Okay, simple error. I was calling move instead of update. Easy fix. Now we should create a goal that the actual dots are trying to get to. I should probably create a class for this, but I'm lazy, so I'll just have a vector pointing to the goal. Very nice. Okay, also we want to have the dots start from the bottom so they're not already halfway there. So we need a way to figure out which dots did amazingly and which did terribly. So to do this, we need to create a fitness function. We want the dots which got closer to the goal to do better so they have a higher fitness. This means we want the fitness function to calculate the inverse of the distance between the dots position and the goal. So the dots with the smallest distance to the goal will have the highest fitness. I also square the distance. Doing this means that a small step towards the goal means a larger step in that dot's fitness score.
We also need a way to test whether all the dots are dead, so we know when to stop updating and moving them. Once all the dots are dead, we can then create the next generation. So once all the dots are dead, we want to start our genetic algorithm. First up is calculate fitness, then natural selection, and finally we want to mutate damn babies. Woo! Before we make the natural selection function, we want to stop the dots when they reach the goal. Otherwise they can just go straight through it and then go die somewhere else. This is just a simple check in update. Alright, let's see if they stop when they hit the goal. Classic, none of them actually reach it. All right, let's move the dots really close to the goal so they can't miss. There we go, that's what we want. All right, too easy, let's move on. Now let's make our natural selection function. First up, we need a new array to store the dots for the next generation. Then for each space in this new array, we want to select a parent and then get its baby. To get the parent based on fitness, we need to create two functions. First of all, we'll get the sum of the fitnesses. This one's pretty simple. The other one will actually select the parent. I'll leave the explaining of this to Evan. Thanks, Evan. Okay, now we have a bunch of fitnesses and we wanna have the probability that the dot be selected for reproduction be proportional to those fitnesses. So this means if we have a dot with fitness one and another dot with fitness two, the dot with fitness two should be twice as likely to be chosen as the other dot. So how do we do this? First, we need to add up all the fitnesses and then choose a random number between zero and this fitness sum. Then if the random number lands in a particular dot's zone, then that dot is chosen. Okay, explaining done. Back to you, Evan. Now that we have the parent we want, we need a way to get a baby from them. This is where we need to talk about crossover. Crossover is where you have two parents and then you get some genes from each parent and like splice them together. But for programs as simple as this, it's really not necessary to have two parents. And also because I just can't be bothered. That's probably the main reason. So we're just going to clone the dot. This means the child's brain is exactly the same as the parent's brain. Now we just need to set the dots array as new dots and also we're going to keep track of the generation, what generation number we're up to because that's just always good practice. Now it's the time you've all been waiting for, let's mutate them babies. So what we're going to do is we're going to go directly to the brain and just mutate their brain. Inside the brain's mutate function, we need to set the mutation rate. This is the chance of a specific direction being overwritten by a new one. For example, we're doing 0.01, which is 1%. So 1% of the directions will be mutated. They'll be completely overwritten. It'd probably be wise to just like tweak them slightly, but we're just going to completely override them. Woo! Okay, beauty, she's working. So one more thing that we need to do is when dots reach the goal, we want their fitness to be based on the amount of steps they took. Specifically, if you take less steps, we want a higher fitness. This will encourage the dots to get to their destination in the shortest number of steps possible. So let's rewrite the fitness function. What would happen if all the best performing dots mutated negatively? That is mutated so they were worse than their parents. Well, the population as a whole would decrease in quality. They would be taking a step back. A good way to ensure that we're not doing this is to have the champions be immortal. Meaning we take the champion of the generation and just put it directly into the next generation without mutating it. So in order to do that, first we're gonna have to identify the best dot. This is pretty simple. Now that we know which dot is best, we can just simply put it into the next generation. Also, in order to show how the population is progressing from generation to generation, it's a good idea to show 
that champion which we copied over as separate as like different so we're going to show it as a green dot as opposed to all other black dots that way we can see where the progress was last time and see if we've gotten any better this time it, it'll make sense in a second <laughs> So I'm just fixing some stupid errors. First of all, I was overriding the copied in dot almost instantly. Like in the for loop, it starts at zero, which means it's going to overwrite new dot zero. So we need to start that for loop at one. Also, I was still mutating it, which was dumb. So we need to start the mutation at one as well. So, okay, simple stuff. You'll, you'll, you'll see what I'm doing. And voila, it works. Well, not actually. Something I noticed when I was running this is the green dot, which is the best dot, wasn't actually any of those which reached the goal. It was actually the ones which got closest to the goal without touching it. This means our fitness function is, well, it's wrong. We need to ensure that all dots which reach the goal have a better fitness than those which don't. So we need to rewrite our fitness function. Again. <laughs> okay, I think this is the last thing to add before we're done. What we want to do is when a dot reaches the goal, we want to save the amount of steps it took and not allow anything else to take more than that amount of steps because by definition, it would be worse. So when we calculate the best dot, we need to check if it reached the goal and if it did save the number of steps. Congratulations to anyone who is actually following on at home, which I kind of doubt. You've made your first machine learning thing, uh, <laughs> genetic algorithm thing, whatever you want to call it. Um, as you can see, it's pretty quickly optimizing the path, which is, I mean, it's a pretty easy path. You just got to go straight up. So let's make it a bit more difficult and a bit more interesting. Let's put some obstacles in the way so that I actually have to navigate around them. Adding obstacles is pretty simple. You just need to, first you need to show them, and then you need to check if a dot is within their boundaries in the update function. Pretty simple stuff. If you are actually doing this properly, you'd probably make a class called obstacles or something, and you could add it and test in there. But we're doing this the quickest, most lazy way possible. So just in update, just test whether it's inside the boundaries. And if it is, then kill it. So this is it. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Probably didn't, but <laughs> if you could pretend you did, that'd be great. Our next video is going to be about neural networks, which is how the AIs actually think. This is how they learn. Next one will be how they think. And then uh, one after that will probably be like neat, maybe. I don't know if we're up to that point. We might need a few. Neural networks are pretty complicated, so we might need a few uh, tutorials on that. So hopefully you could follow this fairly easily. If you couldn't, post any questions in the comments below. Other people or myself will answer them, hopefully. I'll put out the source code. Link will be in the description. Um, so you can just you can just copy paste my stuff if you don't want to type it out. And then just you can mess around with the obstacles and stuff. It's all pretty easy. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Bye. <laughs>